everybody, this is Chef Danny and welcome to Cooking in Chords. We are going to have a great show tonight. We are going to be highlighting seasonal butternut squash in a pasta dish. But before that, I'd like to do a quick tribute to a great singer, Tony Lewis from the outfield, who passed away last week. And uh, I remember when I first heard this song, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. In the 80s it was. Potato and yucky originated from northern Italy where the climate was a little cooler, <clears throat> so it was more suitable to grow potatoes rather than grain. And the potatoes that grew there were very, very starchy, which made for a very little, much lighter dough and a fluffier pillow for the gnocchi. Some say that the word originated from the word nocca, which means knuckle or nocchio, which is a, a knot in the wood. I don't know where it originated from. All I know is I like to eat these things. So we're gonna just start. I'm gonna tell you how to do this whole thing. I have some stuff prepared ready, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through it. You get your butternut squash here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the ends, cut it right in half, scoop out the seeds, put it upside down with the skin on in a roasting pan with a little bit of olive oil over the skin and the, and the back with a little bit of salt and pepper, pop it in the oven for 400 degrees for about 60 minutes. When it comes out, you're going to cool it, and then you're going to scoop it out. Now, when you scoop it out, you can do a couple different things. You can put it in the food processor to mash it up. You can use a ricer like I did to mash mine, okay? A potato masher. You might get a little lumps in there with the potato masher, <clears throat> but you can also use a hand mixer in any event. You want it to mash those first. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to start making this right here. We are going to put our gnocchi, uh, we're going to make our gnocchi dough. We're going to add our, um, we're going to add our mashed butternut squash, some beaten egg, okay? Now, once you start making these a lot, you're going to, um, you're going to get to know the consistency of this. I'm going to add a little salt to this. Just a little bit of salt right there. I'm going to start to mix this in. We're going to add some flour. It's about two cups. We might need more flour. I don't know. I'm also going to miss about a quarter cup of cheese. Parmesan cheese. Okay. Mix this. We're gonna mix this in. Now, if your dough is dry, you can add a little more of your um, butternut squash puree. Okay. If the dough is wet, you add a little more flour. <clears throat> now I'm gonna start to mash this up. I'm gonna start to knead this with my hands. See that? This is going to be nice, this dough. I have a good feeling about this. And the pigment is not going to change once you cook it. Like things like squashes, 
butternut squash, carrots, beets. They don't change color. Okay. So you can do this like the old Italian ladies, like my grandma used to make a well with the mountain of flour on the cutting board. I prefer to do it in I prefer to do it in a bowl like this because I don't want to make a big mess. Alright. Once you do this, you take it out. It's still gonna be a little sticky, and that's okay. You take it out. You're gonna reserve some flour. You're gonna reserve some flour. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna take a little plate out here. Yucky dough. And now is where we're gonna to start to roll these. Roll it into a into a log. A little flour, because it's gonna still be sticky, okay? Just cut them into little kind of like rondelles here, and then you're gonna roll them. And you're gonna roll them here, you're gonna stop here. You're not gonna go like this and taper the ends, because we don't want that. In the middle, hand over hand, almost like you're doing CPR. Come here and just stop right there. Done. Come here, right in the middle. Boom. Make them the same, <clears throat> same size. Right here, like this. Very easy. Okay. Then you're going to need to flour these a little bit. All right. Now, you can cut them. You can use a scraper. You can use a regular knife, just like this. You want to cut them about three quarters of an inch. Like this, cut them. You want to put flour in between them because if you don't, they're going to stick together. Okay, just like this. Really simple. I made some in yucky ahead to cook with this so you didn't have to watch me make all this. But I don't know. I think I might just make it all. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna do now we're going to take a fork. Well, you can get that little piece of wood. They call it la guitarra, which is a guitar. It's a little piece of wood with a handle. It's got um, ridges on it, and you just kind of like roll them. So I'm going to just do it with the fork. You just come here, quick, boom, like this. One, two. You get the sticky part, and just roll it. And the reason we're putting ridges on there is to help the sauce stick to the pasta, just like that. See the ridges on there? Boom. Just like this. Real simple. Just with the thumb. Boom. You're not pressing hard. You gotta go delicate with this stuff. If you press too hard, this is what happens. You don't want that to happen. If you press too hard, it gets all mushy like this because it's so soft. The dough is so delicate that you don't want to press hard. Gotta keep these separated. I already have my water boiling. Okay, it was boiling. Now it stopped, so I turned it back on. And I let the water boil first, and I'm going to add my salt to the water. Your salt, you're going to add about a tablespoon of salt per gallon. You can guesstimate it, because it takes longer for salt water to boil. So, What the salt's going to do is it's going to flavor the pasta. It's also going to help it float. You know, buoyancy. It's important, because the pasta can stick together if it sinks. Now these originally are going to sink to the bottom. Okay, so here you go. You want to have a little tray on the side. Okay, I'm just going to have a little plate here. I've already made some pasta here. I'm going to add some salt to this. And now, these are going to go right in. That's there. This pot's going to go in here, and now I'm going to start with my sauce. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some olive oil. I'm going to add some olive oil to this, and a little butter, and some bacon. I'm going to add some bacon first. I'm going to render down some of this bacon. You know what? I'm going to render down that bacon.
Grinding this down. This is going to be beautiful as far as flavor. I'm going to add a little butter to this. Normally you can do like a sage butter sauce. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to do some different stuff here. I'm adding some garlic. And I have peeled garlic that I peeled with my cooking cord garlic peel. And now I'm going to slice it with my time and energy saving garlic crusher here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Thin as can be, just like the way I like it. Okay, we're going to wait a little bit on this. Meanwhile, these are cooking. What's going to happen with these? These are going to float when they're done. I have some time here. These are going to float when they're done. They don't take too long. Let me put the top on. Because what the top will do is it'll start to heat the water faster. We'll leave that here. We're just going to render this bacon off. We're going to make it a little crispy. I have some fresh thyme here from my garden. I'm going to do fresh thyme in here like this. I'm going to take the thyme off of the stem. Put the thyme in here. And I'm going to add the thyme to my sauce, my butter sauce. Beautiful. This is a really great fall dish. Very inexpensive to make. And this dough here that I made, if I don't want to use this dough, I can just wrap it and freeze it, or I can make the pasta and freeze the pasta already made. See that? Look at this part. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. All right, so we have this. This is good. Now this is starting to brown. Beautiful. Look at that, huh? Now, if you'd like to, you can add some hot pepper seeds. Some hot pepper seeds here, just a little, just for a little flavor in. Okay, this, these are starting now to boil, and they're starting to float. See that? So we're going to let that boil a little more. This is starting to render down beautifully. We are going to add our... Thyme, brown pepper, okay, and I'm going to add a touch of lemon just for a little, to up our taste buds here, just a little bit. Watch for your seeds, you don't want to put the seeds in there, okay, just a little lemon in here like this, beautiful. All right. Whoops. So now that is going to be beautiful. Let's see how this is going. They're starting to cook. And just in a few seconds, they're going to be floating. Once they float, I have a little strainer over there. And I am going to strain the pasta. Right into the, right into the pan. We clean as we go. This is for our garnish part right here. I'm going to add my garlic now. I'm going to add my garlic at the end because I do not want my garlic to burn. You can mince the garlic with the mincer. All right, the cooking cord mincer. I prefer it sliced, so I sliced mine. There we go. Oh, I can smell it. Can you smell that garlic? It part? smells great. Oh my God. Barbara and I were just last week doing a private event for, for a gentleman that turned 75 years old. And they were, they were having a blast, huh, Barb? Mm hmm So we brought this unbelievable and unforgettable experience to their home where we went there because they like to entertain and they dazzled their family and they were guests at their own events. That's, they didn't have to do any work. They didn't have to do any cleanup. We left their house just as clean as when we came. And they were so pleased. And the, the smiles and the, the joy that we brought to them, um, it was unbelievable. And it was just as much as an experience 
for us as it is was for them. Really, really nice. So here I go. Uh, I am now going to just take this out like that. Oh, look at that, huh? Mm -hmm. Now what I'm going to do is I should go. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, I think I put enough bacon in there that I can accommodate all of this macaroni, all this pasta. That's what I'm going to do. I can smell the thyme. It smells beautiful. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. And now I'm just going to saute, turn it back on high. I'm going to allow the flavors of, ooh, Oh yeah, oh yeah. Woo! I'm gonna allow these flavors to meld in there. Some of the some of the sauce is gonna get absorbed into the pasta, which is what I want. Okay. I also have some cheese, and I'm gonna to add to the end here, just a little, not an overabundance, because we're gonna add more to the top. Okay. Now before it starts to stick. Before it starts to stick to the pan, we are going to take it off. Okay, Barbara. We are going to move this out of the way. We're going to plate this. vibrancy of those colors. Look at how beautiful those look. Okay, that is nice. Woo-wee! Okay, so we have that. We're going to add a little of cheese. Okay. Look at that. We're going to add a little more fresh thyme. We're going to add for a little garnish right here. We can put a little garnish right there. Okay, but we can also add a little more thyme. Just for the top. Just for the top. See? Like this. And to add a little texture, to add a little texture, I candy some pecans here. I just put these, a little bit of white sugar, a little bit of honey, a touch of water, and I just mix them in a bowl. I put them in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. And what happens is the, the water evaporates, and this gets to be this hard, beautiful, caramelized nut. And what this does adds a little sweetness to the savory dish, and it also adds some texture. So we're just going to cut these a little bit, just like that. We're not going to put an overabundance on there. We're going to put a little bit. Oh, just like that. Now, now that is what I call autumn cooking right there. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Boom. If you want to add a little more lemon just to cut through that fat a little bit, just a teeny bit, that's it. There you go. This is seasonal or local butternut squash. It's, uh, you can get it all year round, but right now it's abundant in the season. And it just tastes better when it's from your own area. It's incredible. You can use this and wow your friends and dazzle the people who come over. Fantastic. Folks, thank you so much. Um, if you'd like to reach out, if you are looking to entertain and be the guest at your own event and dazzle your friends with five-star food and world-class service, and music that I actually bring. You can reach out to me at cookingandchords.com. That's the website, cookingandchords at gmail.com or my personal cell phone, which is 203-414-5263. We have three dates left for holiday time. So if you want to claim one of those dates, I highly recommend you reach out because it's booking fast. Thank you so much. Enjoy the week. Be blessed and God bless.